Oh yeah. There's 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. How good it is to have each and every one of you here today as we join together in God's house to receive his precious gifts of life, salvation, and eternity in him. Our order of service this morning is Divine Service Setting 3, and we welcome those of you that are joining us from home or wherever you may be. You may download that order of service from the link that's right by your picture there, and be able to follow along with us. Today we celebrate the second week of Epiphany. We also celebrate the Sanctity of Life Sunday, being reminded of the precious gift that God gives us of life, both life here on earth and life eternally. 
And that is why you will see at the altar the red rose reminding us of all of those that have uh, lost their life um, because of <coughs> excuse me uh, because of the acts of um, taking the life of both the unborn the those that are uh, challenged in physicalness or those at the end of life and so we take and recall the gift of life that God gives us and thank and praise Him for that life. With that in mind, we begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 909, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, 
I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. And upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord brought me to the banqueting hall, and his banner over me was love. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to God. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Man and beast you save, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of man. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your life do we see light. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord brought me to the banqueting house, and the banner over me was love. <laughs> Glory be to God on high. pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated.
The Old Testament lesson for the second week of Epiphany is from the prophet Isaiah, the 62nd chapter. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her righteousness go forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples, for great is his steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Our epistle is from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray by mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by that same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. And when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there 
for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, he did not know where it came from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when everyone had drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we join together in the hymn of the day, hymn number 611, Chief of Sinners, Though I Be.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That person. Those people. They don't matter. Maybe those aren't the words that come out of your mouth. But have you ever felt it? Have you ever thought it? Have you ever acted like that? That person doesn't matter. So, I can make fun of them. I can bully them. I can use them for a little fun in life. It won't hurt me after all. Those people, they don't matter. They're not worth my time or my bother, my effort or my attention. I know there's some of them that sleep outside or they go hungry. But that's their own choice. They could help themselves. And why are there so many that are aborted and mercy killed or die all alone while no one is there with them? It's because those people don't matter. In the day of Jesus, the Jews thought that about the Samaritans and the Samaritans thought that about the Jews. That was thought about the slaves in early America. Who do we think that about today in our world? Those people don't matter. But I do. And maybe I and the world would be better off if God would just cleanse the world of them. The babies, the elderly, the suffering, the dying, and the disabled. Those people, they just don't matter. But I do. Right? After all, what do they have to offer to me? What can I gain from them? Can they help me in any way? Can they serve me? Those people, they don't matter. Oh, maybe you don't say those words. But at times, do you feel it? Do you think it? Do you act like it? Has that attitude wormed its way into your heart and into your mind and into your life? Even without you realizing it. Hard words. Hard for me to speak. Hard for me to hear. For my own words strike me down at times. I'm convicted of this too. For at times being uncaring and negative thoughts. When I've lived as though those people don't really matter. Or at least don't matter enough for me to do anything about to stand up for them and to help them. May God have mercy on me for those times when I've lived as though those people don't matter and only I matter. Those people don't matter. Words that I hope would bring repentance to each and every one of us this day. 
and yet words that can bring us joy too. In this way, that to know that these are words that you will never, never, ever hear uttered by God. For the message of sanctity of human life is that those people matter. That you matter. And that I matter. And not just matter, but are precious to God. And that in order to use the words of Isaiah, your God, he rejoices over you. And you will be called by a new name. By His name. The name in which He gives you in holy baptism. That's incredible. Knowing who you are. Knowing that you and I are sinners. And nevertheless, our God loves us just as we are. For those people, and you and I were created by God in His image. We were knit together by Him in the womb. Fearfully and wonderfully and specially made. Even though sin has entered into our lives and made us less than what God had created us, And intended us to be. Those people. And you and I have been redeemed by God. By the blood of God himself. In the person of his son, Jesus Christ. That blood that was shed upon the tree of the cross. For you and me. As he laid down his life that we might have life as he traded places with us if you didn't matter then he wouldn't have done this those people and you and I truly matter no matter how old or how young Whether we are born or unborn, whether we are able or disabled, whether we are black and white or some other color, whether we are Christian or non-Christian, whether we are a big sinner or little sinner, whether we are Jew or Samaritan, Democrat, Republican, Independent, or apolitical, whether we are homeless or wealthy, slave or free, man or woman, You matter. You matter to God. And so Jesus came. He came for you. For them. For me. Even as we see in our gospel lesson this day. When he came to the wedding feast. Which may seem like such a meaningless thing in the big picture of who Christ is and what he does. But that bride, that groom that day, it mattered that Jesus was there. And it teaches us something about how we matter to God. For Jesus has come, as Isaiah said, to marry you. To be your bridegroom for his bride, the church. For we need one that will provide for us. And not just here in this life, but for the life to come, for eternity. The bridegroom who will love and cherish you for better, for worse, for richer or poorer in sickness and in health. And the one that not even death can separate you from him. So he enters death. And He defeats death on your behalf. Because you truly matter. That He might give you life. 
eternal life as you need it. And in this life, we need purification from our sins, but six stone water jars is not enough to wash that away. In fact, all the water in the entire world is not enough. But water, when it's combined with the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is a miraculous washing that takes all of our sins away, that makes us clean, makes us perfect in the sight of our Heavenly Father. And likewise, all the bread and wine in the world cannot take and cleanse us. But when that bread and wine is connected with the Word and promises of God, He gives us far more than just earthly bread and wine, but gives us that body and blood of Christ that was crucified for us and grants us true forgiveness of all of our sins. What a blessing that our God truly does care for you and me and for them, for the entire world. Because without His love, sin would take and destroy. For you truly matter. And this. Jesus' first sign teaches us that. For it seems like a strange first sign, doesn't it? Of all the first signs that Jesus could have done. It's this. But it sets the stage to help us understand all the rest. For Jesus says to his mother, my hour has not yet come, but it was coming. Pointing to that hour. And when Jesus would take and reach out his hands on the cross and say, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. The hour in which he would change death into life with his resurrection that would happen upon the third day, just like His miracles. For you matter. Your life matters to Him. Your death matters to Him. And the life and death of those people around us also matter. Whoever they are. Wherever they are in their life and their journey. For those people He has died. For you He has died. That you and they and I might live, and not just live a little, but live eternally. For like this wedding feast in Cana, how often things in life start out joyful. Marriage and friendships and jobs and churches, holidays and families. But then, then all of a sudden, something happens. The wedding feast runs out of wine. We run out of patience. Sin erupts from within us or upon us and tragedy interrupts us. Strife rears its ugly head at us. Small disagreements grow into big disputes. And what started out so joyful, we try to get by. We make the best of a bad situation. Good enough. We try for. And yet we are not satisfied, and many times these things all fall apart. Because we try to answer and solve them ourselves. But just like the wedding feast at the Cana of Galilee, Jesus, when He is invited and when He enters in, changes things. 
and with him there is forgiveness oh the devil would like to convince us quite the opposite that you are far superior to others but you're not and I'm not we all have the same sickness the sickness of sin and eternal death if not saved by the great physician our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the point of or at the ending of the funeral service at the committal these words are spoken may God the Father who has created this body May God the Son who by His Spirit has redeemed this body, and may God the Holy Spirit who by holy baptism sanctified this body, keep these remains until the resurrection of all flesh. What a reminder for us of how much our God cares for our life. From beginning to end. How precious it is in his eyes. Which sadly, sometimes we only realize when we are confronted with death. When a dear one has departed this life. We are reminded that God created them special. That he has redeemed them in his love. That He sanctified them for life with others and with Him eternally. But why wait for the funeral? Perhaps this is how we should look at each other now. Not that those people don't matter, but that they matter. Because our Father has created them. Because His Son has redeemed them. And that His Spirit wants to sanctify them. They matter to Him. So they should matter to us. Those people, they do matter. That's the attitude not warmed by the words of this world, but ingrained in us through holy baptism. As the Lord has fed and nourished us with His body and blood. Those people do matter. And we are in need of the same love that they are in need of. And so there is forgiveness. Forgiveness for them. And forgiveness for you. Those people do matter. So we must defend them. The unborn, the elderly, the sick, the dying, the fragile, the outcast. For them, we must speak the words of Christ and defend and care and speak up for them. For those people do matter. So we must pray for them as Christ prays for us. Those people do matter. That's the word spoken by God most loudly when He hung upon the tree of the cross. You matter. That's why He took His last breath and cried out, It is finished. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Not only on the sanctity of life Sunday, but every day. Until Jesus returns. Those people do matter. And you matter. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God that passes all understanding... Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.
Amen. Please be seated, and at this time I'd ask Dawn to please come forward to give us a stewardship thought. Good morning. Good morning. morning. One day a professor entered the classroom and asked his students to prepare for a surprise test. They all waited anxiously at their desks for the exam to begin. The professor handed out the exam with the text facing down. As usual, once he handed them all out, he asked the students to turn the paper over. To everyone's surprise, there was no questions. Just a blank black dot in the center of the paper. The professor, seeing the expressions on everyone's faces, told them the following. I want you to write about what you see there. The students, confused, got started on the explicable task. At the end of the task, the professor took all the exams and started reading them out loud in front of the students. All of them, with no exception, defined the black spot, trying to explain the pos- its position on the center of the sheet. After all had been read, the classroom silent, the professor started to explain. I'm not going to grade you on this. I just wanted to give you something to think about. No one wrote about the white part of the paper. Everyone focused on the black dot. And the same happens in our own lives. We have a white piece of paper to observe and enjoy, but we focus on the black spot. Our life is a gift given to us by God with love and care. And we, reala- we always have reasons to celebrate nature renewing itself every day. Our friends around us, the job that provides our livelihoods, the miracles we see every day. However, we insist on focusing only on that dark spot. The health issues that bother us, the lack of money, complicated relationships, a disappointment with a friend, etc., etc. The dark spots are very small when compared to everything we have in our lives but they are the ones that pollute our mind. Take your eyes away from that black spot in your life. Enjoy each one of your blessings, each moment that life gives you. Be happy and have a life filled with love. James 1, 2-3 My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Thank you. Blessings upon your day and your week. Thank you, Don. We stand and continue with the offertory. Please be seated as at this time uh, we will present our offerings to the Lord. I also invite you to take and sign the fellowship pads and pass those next to those near you. And finally, if you have any prayer requests, if you would fill out one of the prayer cards and the elder on duty will come by to pick that up.
If you are able to, I invite you to please stand for the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you manifest your glory in the sign at Cana as you restored creation through the shedding of Christ's blood. Pour out your grace in abundance. Give us joy and gladness in the revelation of your truth in the person of your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, preserve your son's bride, the church. Make it her constant joy and delight to preach the good news of forgiveness in her Savior to the poor, the needy, to those that are lost, to the sinner. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory. You blessed the wedding at Cana with your presence and honored it with your first miracle. Strengthen and give your gladness to all married couples and their families. Be present in our homes and lives with your free and abundant forgiveness and preserve us in the true faith from each generation to the next. Bless those that celebrate anniversaries this week. Especially we are reminded of Tom and Carrie Hannan. Lord, in your mercy, you are the Lord of life, and life and the gift of life is ours because of you. You have blessed it from beginning until end. And you have granted us the gift to take and share with those around us this life, but above all, that we would share with them the gift of eternal life through the washing and renewal of Your Son through His death and resurrection. Be with those that celebrate birthdays this week. Riley Brown, Tammy Hertzinger, Helen Meadham, Alex Roining, Jerry Rosine, Randy Bradley, Randy Gert, Jolene Wallenberg. Continue to bless us with the life that you give unto us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, you rule this world by your power. Give to your civil servants respect and recognition of your creation and its nature. When they use the authority that is given to them from above, let it be in accordance to your good design for our world and not the corruption of sin. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, We bring before you those that are sick and distressed and needy, especially Bill Otto, Linda Ratzberg, Jill Thomas, Michael Burns, Carla Watson, Peter Keller, Mary Howden, Lorna Forbes, Ken Schwerbel, Rose Mitchell, Dorothy Wirth, Karen Lambert, Liz Swanee, Shannon Braun, Jim Perry, Mona Barkey, Ron Virchow Sr., Rose Kozlowski, Pastor Ronald Meyer, Joan Reinke, Tom Drum, Michael Hastings, Merle Weber, Denise Durkee, Joyce Virchow, Jeff Dion, Sue Maynard, Donna Meese, Kathy Brigatti, Diane Olson, Frank Erdman, Alan Monteufel, Deb Monteufel, Shirley Fleischer, Dan Shale, Ann Keller, Caleb, and Peter. 
Judy Krause, Lynn Olson, Reverend Jerry Stecker, Dominic Hall, Sam Cook, Gloria Williamson, Lydia King, and David Cotter. Give your abiding comfort in every circumstance that in Christ we shall not die but live and declare his words. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that of your grace you have instituted holy marriage in which you have kept us from unchastity and other offenses. We implore you, send your blessings upon every husband and wife. Do not let them provoke one another into anger or strife, but let them live peaceably according to your love and godliness. Strengthen them with your grace and help in all temptations. Help them to raise up their children in accordance to your will. Grant us and all to walk before you in purity and holiness, putting our trust in you and leading such lives on earth that in the world to come we may have everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son, in Him being found in the substance of mortal nature. You have manifest the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me
And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it and he gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
And now may this very body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. <clears throat> Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Just a reminder after our closing hymn, there is... Sunday school this morning, as well as the Bible study that Pastor Aliot has on community, we are not alone, and my Bible study, which is meeting in the conference room this morning, will be a study on life and the sanctity of life. So please come and join us for one of those studies. We conclude then by singing our closing hymn, Go My Children with My Blessing, number 922.